All right, Caleb, talk to me, Goose. You said in our 345 production meeting that you thought that the new NIL proposed legislation is not great. Oh, I don't think it's just not great. I no, think we didn't do this. We purposefully didn't do it during the meeting. Uh, so we we'll wanted to do it in the parking lot. Uh, we didn't want to do it in the parking lot, as uh, John Pennington used to always say before he would do his show the sports source on WATE. Um, but the NIL proposed legislation is out. I want you to explain this to me as you see it, why it's not good. And I'm going to tell you why Tennessee fans should celebrate the current state of NIL. So you go first, and then I'm going to tell you exactly why. Tennessee, the University of Tennessee, and a few other schools, not many, a handful, a few other schools should celebrate the way this NIL proposed legislation movement is unfold. You go ahead, sir. Okay, so this NIL bill is not about regulating NIL to figure out how to address student athletes, whether or not they're considered employees in California or independent contractors in Tennessee, because that's something to address. This bill specifically is about nothing more than limiting what athletes can do for themselves because it, it establishes a national, it says let's establish a national standard and preserve title IX funding. Okay. How that's a requirement in the bill, but how do you do that? How do you actually go about doing that with NIL? If you have a place like California calling them employees, they don't say that. Here's what they do say specifically. Athletes can't make money of endorsements for things like alcohol. Well, if they're 21, why can't they? Who cares if they're 21 and they Neyland, Neyland Stadium sells alcohol now? And you're telling me a 21 year old on the team can't make an endorsement with a beer company for that? Uh, uh, I would I would agree with that. I do know that they can't because I've tried. Um, so, okay, but here's do, another one. No, but I do agree with what you said. I have no problem. Yeah, with, and, and, now, what about before I get you sidetracked? What about gambling? Because I've asked that question I, before too. I am not seeing anything related with NIL and gambling right now. Um, well, they're I, not going to allow that. I'm going to tell you. Yeah, they probably won't. And, they, and I think there's already existing laws with gambling, so it doesn't really have to be addressed as much. But the other one, and this is a big one, the transfer portal. Now, please tell me, Dave, what the transfer portal has to do with NIL. I mean, this is why it's BS. They're, they're, they are using they are using the we need national standards for NIL to crack down on players' rights because – they want and to who's the, who's the who's the the I want to make sure we get this straight. Who are the actual legislators that are proposing this? So the two so the two crafters are Democratic Senator Joe Manchin and Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville, former Auburn coach. And by the way, okay, so, is gonna, okay let's 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 look at those two guys for a second. So Tommy Tuberville is getting a call from Nick Saban because he doesn't like transfer portal nor NIL. So that's mm -hmm. why he's going to back it. Okay, and who was Joe the other Manchin one? And Nick Saban, Joe Manchin and Nick Saban were best friends as kids. Okay, thank you. So this is Nick Saban's bill. This is Nick Saban pulling. This is Nick Saban pulling strings. Yes, this is Saban's bill, and mainstream media is going to love it because mainstream media doesn't look at the quality of bills. There, if it's bipartisan, they love it. They don't even care about what's in it. They're like, oh, bipartisanship. We love bipartisanship, and that's what they're going to do with this. Um, <laughs> and so. I'm they sorry. are going to moderate the transfer portal by requiring student athletes to complete their first three years of academic eligibility before transferring without a penalty. Now, are you kidding me? This is just bringing back the old rules. They are putting their own feelings on players having too much power into this bill that has nothing to do with creating a national standard for NIL. And it's a terrible bill, bill because of it. They're just trying to transfer power and money back from the players into the hands of coaches and administrators. That's all I want to do. I agree. And Tennessee is in a great spot. Why? Because none of this is going to happen. Not anytime soon. And okay. you and I talked about it. And I talked about it with someone else at SEC Media Days. It may have been Greg Sankey. But I'm like, uh, uh, Commissioner, I mean, they've got a lot. It was Greg Sankey. I was like, well, this just in. Um, Congress has a lot going on with an economy. And there's this Ukraine thing. And where do you possibly fall on the list? And as nice as he could say it, he was not real high. <laughs> you know, not, not, not real high right now. 
Um, and there are a lot of other things that are going to be higher on the list. So this actually got uncovered. And I think we are the the only ones that talked about this a year ago in Off the Hook Sports. I asked Greg Sankey, I said, what kind of time frame are you looking at? And he goes, well, you got the midterm elections coming up. Well, I mean, that that was last year. Okay, and then he said, you have the presidential elections coming up. Well, that's 2024. None of this is getting passed anytime soon. None of this is going to happen anytime soon. If you like to sit back and wait and read about proposals, then fine. We can all do that and we can address what's fair and what's not. But the fact is nothing is going to change anytime soon. And as long as it doesn't, then Tennessee's in the catbird seat. Let's say something goes wrong with Spire, which I'm not implying it will be. Somebody else will fill that void. The only thing that could affect what Tennessee is doing right now in NIL is if Congress puts down these type of laws, which based off the ones you gave me sound very illegal. And based off the timeline, Josh Heupel could win a Super Bowl for the Rams by the time this stuff gets passed. He could he could be the only the third coach ever to win a na- fourth coach to win a national championship and a Super Bowl. I mean, this is not going to happen within three, four, or possibly even five years. So if I'm Tennessee, I'm like, yay. Like the Joker. Sometimes you just want to sit back and watch the world burn. You love anarchy. You love chaos. Hope this stuff just goes on for the rest of the 2020s because right now you're in front of the game. And the game is being reworked. But right now, you're in front of it. So let it be reworked. You're not facing any possible penalties because you're not breaking any laws unless they do something incredibly stupid, which I don't think Josh Heupel and the Spire Group would do. Keep rolling, brother. If you're a Tennessee fan, every time you hear new proposed legislation for NIL, that means somebody else like uh, Tommy Tuberville or Nick Saban's best childhood friend is trying to make a name for themselves, and it really means nothing. Until you see Greg Sankey sitting in a congressional hearing, and I'm sorry, the Major League Baseball steroid issue was bigger than this, and it took months for them to get in there. Until you see Greg Sankey and other commissioners in a congressional hearing, this ain't going anywhere. Anywhere. And also, isn't there kind of a technically a free speech issue? Because we've now, based on Supreme Court rulings in the past, you can't limit advertisements, for instance, if it violates the First Amendment. Well, if you're going to limit advertisements with players, there's kind of a First Amendment violation there at that point. And so there's so many issues that they can't figure out. And I, I got here, here's my here's my theory on this, Dave. I'm a follow the money type of guy. I believe a lot of boosters, a lot of boosters are billionaires. They are the people that fund Congress. Let's be honest, Congress is run by the billionaire class who funds these politicians. They make all the rules and they use the politicians as a vessel to do it. I think a lot of billionaires want to support their program, but they don't want to get into an arms race with other programs. And Tennessee is out ahead of the arms race. You're right. Tennessee's billionaires, they will throw any money they can to win a game on Saturday. They don't care. And- I can guarantee you that if if Alabama loses Nick Saban, if he retires, Alabama doesn't want to get in the NIL race. They don't really have to right now. Uh, they can pay their players once they show up and promise them that, hey, you're tripping over nickels to get millions, which is John Calipari saying, and that means they'll get you best prepared for the NFL. So that's still a stronger argument than short-term cash for anybody that has any sense. So you're still going to get some money at Alabama, but you're probably not going to be in a Nico situation where you get family generational changing money unless you've proven yourself which I think most people would agree is a better way to go. But can you legislate that? H-E to the double L, no. Well, and that's the thing. These boosters want this legislation to save themselves from themselves. The same way, you know, this in the NFL, the only reason a hard cap exists is to protect the owners from themselves. They want to make sure that they're not stuck making a stupid decision. It's the same thing with this NIL. The boosters want to be protected from themselves because they don't want to have to get into an arms race with Spire Sports 
or that whatever the one in my is in Miami. And I say, if you don't want to get into an arms race, tough break, get into an arms race or watch your program fall behind. That's the way I look at it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to text, uh, since we're done here, I'm going to text Heath Schuler and get, get him to join us. And not only was he a great quarterback, he was a, uh, a Senator that in, in my, well, I guess he was a Congressman, right? So he was a congressman that, in my opinion, cared about the truth more than being aligned with a side. So I bet he could give us some really good insight. So I'm going to text him. So expect Heath Shuler on the show before terribly long. I don't want to tease him before he's booked, but uh, he's pretty good about getting back. And uh, I love doing uh, broadcasting with Heath. So we'll just bump Caleb that day. I'm joking. Caleb and I will talk to Heath. And Caleb knows more about politics. So we'll provide you a little bit of insight and uh, when any legislation about the NIL may be passed.